We're going to talk this uh, next 90 minutes about, uh, for all of you folks in L.A. who are living literally uh, in a gas cloud of methane gas and spiced with radioactivity, you don't know it. They won't tell you. It's true. And there are some, including myself, who are suggesting that parts of the San Fernando Valley ought to be evacuated. Maybe a big part. It's not just the Porter Ranch. It's gas that doesn't know any borders. It just goes and goes and goes. And it's going, but it's not going alone. And the issue of radioactivity coming up from deep in the ground is not being talked about, except here. We're going to talk about it. Yoshi Shimatsu knows all about it. He has put it together. He is telling the truth. He is telling the story that's not supposed to be told. Dana Dernford is here as well. Dana, welcome to the program. Listen, uh, tell us about methane in and of itself is, is deadly. It's bad. It's very toxic. How did you figure out about the radioactivity which is being spewed all over the place? No one's talking about it. Well, you know, there's methane, there's sulfur compounds, there's benzene, xylene, uh, mercaptane, which gives the smell to, you know, gas. This gas is odorous, basically, basically. It's very old natural gas, deep underground, two miles underground. But I'll tell you what uh, the scandal is. Well, I found out about it was through the, actually, the California State EPA um Report. They mentioned uh, radon in the area traditionally. Yeah. But also, the, Cal- uh, the California State Environmental Protection Agency also said that besides the L.A. County officials there, uh, Governor Brown's office, state officials there, that interestingly, uh, the camel pokes its nose into this tent, you know, in northern Los Angeles, Aliso Canyon. And that camel, as we well know, is the nuclear protectors, the so-called regulators, protectors, and promoters of the nuclear industry. And so on the um, Environmental Response Committee, we have three major national laboratories, okay? Mm -hmm. They're they're, they're, uh, basically part of this uh, remedial action, if you want to call it, although very little has been done or remedies to the situation. And these laboratories are the Lawrence... Our laboratory, top nuclear weapons laboratory, of course, in the United States, the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, another top nuclear weapons laboratory, and out in New Mexico, the Sandia National Lab. So, so we got Lawrence Livermore and Sandia National Labs. Okay. All right. Watching over what's happening in the Liso Canyon, and no wonder. The L.A. Times, the McClatchy Group, you know, that put, puts out the Sacramento Bee, San Francisco Chronicle. No one, none of the major papers are making this a front page item. At best, it's a local news story of a little gas leak out there in some very unknown part of Los Angeles County. <laughs> a little okay. gas leak, yeah. Treated. Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out that I was looking up advertising in that area. Yeah, you know, because uh, I have, you know, I, I, I have some roots in Los Angeles and all that. Uh, you know, family members out there. So yeah. the area is very familiar to me out there. Um, turns out that in this area for decades, there have been companies that uh, uh, basically they vacuum clean the radon out of your basement and out of your cabinets. They advertise regularly in the Porter Ranch uh, area. Radon has been a long-term problem, and right now, the residents reporting. So a lot of residents that do have, you know, Geiger County dosimeters, they have radon warning devices installed by these companies under their sinks and all that. And they're saying massive amount, this, this, this uh, gas leak has been pushing massive amounts of radon all over Porter Ranch areas, coming out of cracks into their huh. houses. And uh-huh. also uh-huh. the mist, this blowout, lots of radon coming out in this massive mist. And uh, I mean, what we're talking about, it's 50 tons an hour of, of gas, of, of you know, of basically gas coming out of there, you know, the methane, uh, natural gas, you know, this whole natural gas mix is coming out of there. There's got to be a lot of radon. And one of the questions is people may have is why is there nuclear, you know, the radioactive gas coming out of the ground in the suburb of Los Angeles? What's it doing? Where did and it come from? Is- why is it there? Exactly. Okay, well, this isn't the first time, probably. Uh, 
This is not a ga- natural gas well. They use the word well, but you know it's not like natural gas is naturally coming out of the ground. What it is, these were very old oil fields run by J. Paul Getty. You know, he was the owner of Occidental Oil, very famous, scandalous sort of fellow. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Getty Museum. A lot of people have been to the Getty Arts Museum in Los Angeles. Well, the man who's behind that was J. Paul Getty. Uh-huh. Uh, he had an oil field there in these hills along this ridge line that's along the San Fernando Valley. It's one of the walls along the valley. He had uh, oil fields there back in the 50s, okay? And they pumped into the 70s and were shut down. In 1973, Southern California Gas took over those empty oil fields. Now, the oil was in these reservoirs two miles be- uh, below the ground, down, let's say, between 8,000 feet underground to 8,700 feet of ground. It's something like an aquifer down there. In fact, there's water there. Oil floats on water. There's an aquifer down there, brine. Uh, there's uh, what is water. There's brine that was used for injection of brine to push up the oil, and there is still residual oil there. Now, what it is is this is very much like Cigar Lake, Canada, where you've got bedrock, you know, you have most of this California is basically sandstone there. So below that, you've got this aquifer, and below the aquifer, it rests on a layer of bedrock, basically seabed there, very hard stone, and yeah. that's where you'll find uranium and thorium. Deposits. Yeah, the, the, know, water, the water floats on top of that bedrock and picks up uranium yeah. and radon and, yeah. and just ejects it. Yeah, and then uh, and the problem is when you pump gas in there, they pump it down. The gas is highly pressurized, so and there's water in there. So basically, what you're doing is you're inadvertently fracturing water pressure, fracturing uranium and thorium down there, uh, speeding up the breakdown and also releasing ah, the very interesting. Of the yeah, fracking. Yeah, so the radium huh. is down, it's been down there. You know, there's all kinds of decaying materials down there. But uh, radium, depending on the isotopes, there are many isotopes. From a thousand years old to, let's say, just a few you know, seconds old, radium will break down. It'll degrade into radon gas. And that's because it's very volatile. It's been a problem, in, especially in the western states, in places like the Rocky Mountains, where you have like granite soils. It's uh, a major cause of cancer, lung cancer. And it takes very, very little of this radon inside air or natural gas to come into your house to cause lung cancer. And this is a, uh, something we'll discuss. G- so this yeah. is being covered up yeah. in three major national laboratories, and this could well be explained why Southern California gas, this, this, this gas leak was so-called discovered on October 23rd. We have right. no idea right. how long. Going no, on. it could have been or going on for weeks because you can't see methane. It's invisible. Hold on a minute. We have to pause. Yoshi yeah. will come right back. Okay. This yeah. is a huge yeah. story. And as I said earlier, parts of L.A. ought to be evacuated like Tokyo. Right after this, we shall continue. Mm-hmm. So stay right there. As everyone can see, we could be hours or minutes away from a national crisis. Are you ready? Be back with uh, Yoshi. Let me check in and see if Dana is there. Are you there, Mr. D? Yeah. I am so. Thank you. Hi, Yoshi. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Dana. Thanks for being here. We're talking about this uh, this radioactive wow. methane expulsion, which is covering the San Fernando Valley. And yeah, yeah, we'll talk uh, and get your view on that in just a minute. Hang on. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, the methane leak, or as they say in England, methane, uh, the main danger from the high radon content, yeah, I'm getting a total echo of my voice, uh, is an increased risk, which Yoshi said, of young can yeah, young, lung, any age cancer, lung cancer, radon is a noble gas, rapidly exhaled after being breathed in. In, however, radon progeny combined with other molecules in the air and it will then turn into particles of dust, aerosols and smoke and laced with radon and readily deposit in the airways of the lung. This is not a joke. We could have hundreds of thousands of cases of lung cancer in the San Fernando Valley in the not-too-distant future. And no one is telling those people uh, to get the hell out. That that is no exaggeration, Jeff. I mean, you don't need very much. uh, uh, And you've got to understand, the radon only has a three-day 
half-life, but there's so much radium, apparently, inside, below the ground there in that reservoir below yes. uh, Porter Ranch. Yes. That yeah. is constantly generating enormous amounts of, tons of, uh, of uh, radon, apparently, a day. Radon decay materials. After it breaks down, it breaks down into radioactive lead. So you get a heavy metal lead, which is lead poisoning, right? Wow, blood, radioactive blood lead. Wow. Yeah, wow. not your brain cell. And you have polonium, as we know, a massive to- yeah, poison. If you want to poison somebody, that's uh, a very famous case, the Liptonenko case in England, the Russian sure. factor, or whatever. Yep. Uh, and by polonium, uh, you've got polonium in the air, plus the radium. There's, and where there's radium, you're going to find particles, tiny particles, because again, this stuff is coming out unfiltered of uranium. Thorium and maybe dozens and dozens of other uh, nuclides. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. have just been thrown in the air. And this, you got to understand, it's not just this. You know, Los Angeles has been was massively hit in 2011, spring, right? By Fukushima. And ever since, by the California current, the, uh, the radioactive water from Japan, from the water, uh, uh, you know, the sea dumping done by Tokyo Electric Power. And LA was also swept. By San Onofre, whenever the winds blew in that direction. You know, sure. it blew right into sure. the LA ocean where it's trapped. Yeah. So Los Angelinos have got a triple punch. This is like the third knockout punch. Three strikes and you're out. San Fernando Valley, uh, towns like Northridge, you know, UC Northridge, major campus there, uh, are going to be hit by this stuff because whenever the wind blows in from the sea, and everyone who knows who's done surfing out there in California beaches knows when the waves pick up, that means the wind is going, is, are basically coming off the sea and they're being pulled uphill by the, uh, you know, the rising heat from the mountains uh-huh. in the LA uh-huh. area and from uh-huh. the desert. So, yeah, there's this massive wind blowing from Porter Ranch, which is sort of on the north, uh, Northeast. west side of Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it's on the northern side, but it's blowing into the San Fernando Valley, you know, up and down the San Fernando Valley, over into Ventura it gets tra- Valley. It gets trapped in the valley. The valley has long yeah, since been a trap yeah. of smog out there. Yeah. yeah. And the Arctic Basin as a whole. So this stuff isn't going anywhere soon, you know, until the Santa Ana winds come along. And that's still a long way before the desert winds blow through and blow the stuff out to sea. So L.A. is basically a toxic zone, not just... You know, we talk about San Fernando Valley. We're talking about L.A. is a toxic area, the Correct. basin, yeah. for yeah. You know, at least until early summer. Okay, this is a very, very bad situation uh, we're facing. You know, and you know, radon is so dangerous that in natural gas, okay, in a cubic meter of natural gas, the U.S. EPA limit, the United States federal environmental limit on it, is two picocuries per uh, cubic meter. That's less, less than 0.07, okay? That's 0.07 becquerels. It's very, very little. That takes because your lungs are so sensitive. You breathe in large volumes of air, and this stuff basically attaches to your lung t- tissue, and you're going to get lung cancer. So serious problem for L.A., not attended to because of, uh, we have a media blackout because the national labs have an interest in suppressing this information as they do in every nuclear disaster, three major national laboratories. And plus, we've got all these uh, volatile organic compounds that destroy your immune system, wreck your lungs, wreck your nervous system. So the people at Port Ranch, 20,000 people very close by, especially in the upper uh, altitudes there, but the whole area of Los Angeles, uh, massive. this is a massive event. We're talking how many? Right. Uh, 50 per hour just jetting out. Now, it took Southern California... Gas did not do anything for the first five weeks. Finally, <laughs> no, decided no. to put in a relief well. And don't ask, don't tell. Con- yeah. To the two pico curies per cubic meter that's contaminating gas. In other words, this gas cannot be sold, okay? It cannot be sold. It, it violates environmental rules. The, the, the radon yeah, the radio, yeah. radio yeah. content is high. Did Southern California gas say, my gosh, this is a golden opportunity. Let's get rid of this stuff. We can't <laughs> sell it. We don't want to store it. Very possible if you know how these corporate people uh, think, you know, people in the mining industry. Right, they, right. You know, they just love to, just like in Fukushima, they just love to vent everything. You drop it into the atmosphere, just dump it into the atmosphere as if it's not going to hurt anybody. 
And uh, same sort of thinking from industry, same irresponsible stuff. And it took local residents, protests by local residents, you know, finally some city assembly members and state assembly members coming in, federal uh-huh. government sitting by watching, wishing this thing wasn't happy, just looking the other way. Typical That's exactly uh, right. Fukushima yeah. right there inside Los Angeles. People yeah. got to wake up. We've got to break this nuclear monopoly. There, there are no sacred cows anymore. Nuclear is not sacred. Right. It's just diabolically dangerous for, for people, especially young kids, older people. It's got to be stopped. You know? What's, and, what's uh, the... Uh, what, what's, the, what's the biggest danger Southern California faces? Diablo Canyon, appropriately named. Yeah. They have a meltdown yeah. at Diablo. L.A. is yeah. toast. It's not like, it's not like uh, yeah. Fukushima and Tokyo. Yeah. It's too close. Yeah. It goes right into the Very L.A. Close. basin. Goodbye, L.A. Yeah. Leaking, that would be the fourth knockout punch. It would be over, and L.A., basically, it will go back to being a desert. You know, everyone who stays will be dead. Uh, everyone who flees will be dying. All and, true. Uh, All true. Well, it's got to be done. I mean, you know, this is a major American economic center. Uh, you know, uh, when uh, former Bi- uh, Premier, uh, Prime Minister Naoto Khan came over and warned the city council of San Diego, they, they had to shut yes, down he did. San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Economic damage, damage, health damage to the population would be inconceivable in the Southern California area. You know, Southern California has a greater economy than most countries of the world. It would be 10th or 9th in the world. All today. true. Yeah, all true. Let and me ask... Uh, about radiation. So I'm not listening, yeah. Let me ask Dana to weigh in here in our last couple of minutes this half an hour. Dana, this radioactive methane gas catastrophe in L.A. is is being carefully suppressed in the media the real dangers are not being talked about. Those people down there really, honestly, don't have much of a chance. Yeah, radon in such high quantities, I guess, is not something we're used to seeing either, you know. No, good. Uh, it sticks to everything. It sticks to dust. It gets picked up by rain, distributed, and absorbed that way through kids and animals mm-hmm. and people themselves, of course. Mm-hmm. And it permeates into your homes and then... And same thing with the gas that's coming through. It's really heavy, and so it sinks to the lower parts of your home. And in those places where it's so hot, people spend a lot more time in their basements. But it's uh, kids are closer to the floor, and children are playing on the floor and stuff like that. And so anybody that has small or has animals and, and or kids and whatever the case may be, that's a concern. And so ventilation, you got to have constant ventilation uh, is still not a solution but it's it's just a way forward if you're not going to leave there and it's, and it's hard for people to leave their homes but uh, the right thing to do is leave your homes when you got such a big supply of these gases coming through well you know people don't want to leave their homes because they've got no defense they're not uh, counting right. on the police to do much to defend no. their houses right. burglars will head right in there there's no question about it get a storage unit put everything yeah, well, in a storage unit that's right yeah. Porter Ranch is the elite uh, equestrian residential area of uh, of the San Fernando Valley. Big money there. A lot of money. Upper, upper, upper middle class, uh, rich people, horse trails everywhere. It's and if, One's before, in the lower gun. The, and the, the, there's yeah. a lot of people that got, not a lot, but several thousand people got funding from the, a well company to move out. Problem being is that the well head that they need to cap is a big hole around it. And the gas is coming up around it. So they can't reach into it because of all the gas. And Correct. if they hit a spark, they boom boomies. They'll never get a cap on anything. Oh, it'll, so it'll, it'll blow sky let, high. One spark. Yeah. Boom. One spark, yeah. And it's hard to avoid it in that scenario. Even the rocks can spark each other. I wonder if the explosion would reach across the valley to one degree or another in the air like a flash blast. I think there's no, probably... not much wind that day, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Because... Um, Think of steam coming or smoke coming out of a fire, folks, and how far, like a forest fire, it can yeah. travel and how thick it can be because it's a big volume. That's what we're talking about here. The only volume. way they could get pictures of the methane was to do it with infrared cameras yeah. because it's hot and it showed I've seen up. That. Yeah, it's fascinating. All right, hold on. We have to pause, folks. We'll come right back with uh, Yoshi and Dana as we continue our weekly radiation report for you. 
to do with what you will, but at least you can't tell anybody you weren't told. And we really appreciate you uh, caring and standing by. We'll be right back with more. Okay, welcome back. Hour number three, and we usually have uh, Yoshi and Dana on this hour. We've had them already for a half an hour. Let me ask this. Uh, first, Yoshi, what can and should be done for the people of the Porter Ranch and the San Fernando Valley in L.A.? What should be done now? Well, so because of the outcry from the, uh, the county and state, uh, at least the people of Porter Ranch will be paid some compensation. But, uh, you know, not everyone there is evacuated, not all 20,000 people. So there should be a much you know, larger evacuation. Than much, uh, as for San Fernando Valley, we don't know how that could be handled, the vast area, you know, a million people there. So it's, it's not clear how the state should handle that. That's up to, you know, lawyers and health authorities. What they are trying to do is they're trying to put in two relief wells. They're trying to put down a well all the way down two miles, okay, a, a, a pipe. They're drilling a pipe two miles. That won't be complete for another week or more. Oh, and they're going to try to pump the gas out, yeah, pump the gas out to relieve the pressure. So the, the, thing, the blowout doesn't have as much force behind it. I mean, this thing has been going on, what, nearly three months. It's an incredible amount of force of the gas. It just keeps this enormous amount of gas. The other thing that they're putting in at a diagonal, they're, they're trying to uh, uh, dig through, uh, they're trying to bore through to the rupture point. There's a pipe there, and there's a casing that's been ruptured, and that's where the gas is allowed the gas to leak out. They're coming in diagonal, but it's very difficult to find. They have to use uh, very uh, you know, um, high-tech uh, magnet, magnetic visualization technology, perhaps tomography, I don't know, to locate this thing and then seal it with a uh, cement polymer compound so that they can plug it, basically cork it. And uh, it's not clear, really, if, in fact, they're going to meet their deadline on either project. They got a very, very late start, and, and as I said, that's very suspicious in itself. They, they claim that the thing be, uh, that was first discovered on October 23rd, we have no idea when this thing started leaking. So basically, they've got to stop uh -huh. the leakage first. Uh -huh. uh, the residual problem, they got to pay, you know, basically sanitize everyone's house, clear the air, um, you know, scrub everything down because there's all kinds oh, of... Oh, no, wait a, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We Hold on. We've seen this alleged... Yeah. House decontamination in Fukushima yeah, in and Fukushima. Yeah. a joke. Yeah. It doesn't work. Well, if there's, again, if there's radiation, if there's radium, if there is, you know, these mineral compounds, if there's radium, if there's uranium, uh, you know, uh, yeah. decay minerals yeah. there, uh, like thorium, uh, you know, stuck to the wall, stuck to the sidewalks, on the lawns. You know, it, it's what are you going to do? It's, pressure what? Oh, what? People, oh, 20,000 people, you've got to move. This place is going to be going back to desert, right? It's uninhabitable. Yes. It's tough for them. They try every uh, means to fool the residents into thinking this is safe for you, your horses, and your dogs, and your kids. Okay? This is what they're going to say. They've already started uh, saying that there's a lot of lawyers, maybe join, jump on a case, and they will go for a settlement. Here's oh, some cash. Sure. Now go sure. home and leave us alone. Okay? Uh, let, and... Yeah, I think the other thing we need to understand about SoCal Gas, it's not a public utility like people think of a public utility. You know, a corporation that's local, that serves the community in the public interest, that tries to help people out. This thing is uh, uh, owned by a company called Sempra, which has more assets in Latin America and Mexico. You know, the, this, basically LA is just a market for Southern America. The ownership... It's not very clear. The, you know, Cayman Islands, Switzerland, we're not really sure who really owns the thing. And what I found out so far is that the CEO, Deborah Reese, she's a former Halliburton executive. They do oil, you know, oil well uh -huh. development and nuclear development. Mm -hmm. uh, Nature board member, James uh, Brock, Brocksmith, poor, another nuclear and oil-related industry. And uh, one of the top board members uh, is Kathleen Brown. She's in charge of environmental issues. She used to work, she worked for 12 years for Goldman Sachs, okay? <laughs> so Goldman Sachs has got some fingers in this company, all right? Sure. Uh, so 
Yeah, well, you got to understand, you know, the whole image of the oil and gas industry, they try to wrap themselves up in the red, white, and blue. Oh, we're patriotic. We want to end you know, dependency on Middle East oil. In fact, they're major international corporations, okay, that get their financing from the Arabs, you know, from the Israelis, from the Russians, Russians and so forth. We don't know where that money's coming from, and they could care less about local people. They're there for profit only. And so we've got to understand what we're dealing with, how they can get so much power in the state of California for this cover-up, is that Sempra, the, the, the major ownership company, they are the largest donor in California districts. These are electoral districts, number 50 and 12. 50 is uh, the district of the Republican head of the state delegation. That's Duncan Hunter, you know, San Diego area. And uh, District 12 is San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi. Okay, they got Nancy Pelosi people in their pocket. They donate to Hawaii, of all places, mm-hmm. to uh, Senator Brian Emanuel Schatz. Brian Emanuel Schatz, who graduated from the same Puna Hole High School of President Barack Obama. He's an old buddy of Barack Obama. We got to okay? get this. And he was one of the first people. He's one of the first people to tell Barack, you run for president, I'll get you the money, okay? So, <laughs> and he is a bad wow. man for Barack Obama in Hawaii, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's the, that's the only congressman, you know, uh, 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 in that area, I mean, in Hawaii, that they're donating. He used to be a congressman, Senator. But they're, they're, this company's main base in the United States is in Louisiana. Okay, people compare, are comparing Porter Ranch to the BC disaster in the Gulf. Well, guess what? Sempra is a big-time Gulf energy player. On their payroll is uh, hmm. uh, Representative Charles, Charles Bulani. He, uh, um, he, he, he's married to the niece of former Governor Edward Edwards. You know, total crook, went to prison, okay, former governor of Louisiana. And also one of the big guys in Louisiana, Senator Dave Vitter, who represents the, 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 the senatorial district where the Napoleon, the Napoleon deal, radioactive, uh, what do you call those collapses? Those collapses, sinkhole. Remember the famous sinkhole in Louisiana? Sure, Radioactive sure. and growing? Yep. He represents that district. He's on their payroll. So we got to understand, this is not your corner store gas station here. This is a major international you know, conglomerate with unknown financial resources, where they're getting them. One of them is the Oppenheimer Group, we know that, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, that, are, that are, you know, uh, uh, in control of what's happening there in L.A., the life and death of L.A., and they didn't do anything for five weeks, okay? And it's going to take them more than three months to complete uh, putting in the relief uh, valve, which still, the thing's going to still be leaving. If, if it stuff, works, it, it'll yeah. just cut it down. <laughs> It's not like Fukushima all over again. You know, they promise these panaceas, and for some reason it doesn't work out. They give a lame excuse. They come back with another panacea. This is terrible. L.A. has been triple hit by nuclear disasters. The last thing they need is free floating radon all over this, you know, this huge county. You know, it, it, this is crazy. Oh, the other thing, for Dana, it's similar. Although this is not exactly a fracking exercise, okay, that it does show... The dangers of fracking all along the North America and, you know, the Rocky Mountains, the Canadian Rockies, and, uh, you know, uh, east of the Rockies, the massive fracking operations that are doing the same thing. This is a high-speed version of what fracking does. It's by putting enormous amounts of liquid under pressure, water under pressure, that far down, you're forcing the radon gas to go through, you know, basically permeate, to move up to the surface and contaminate people's homes, industry, everything. So there's a larger lesson here about the real dangers of fracking that we really haven't been looking at. It's radon. It's lung cancer. You know, it's all these other nuclear compounds that may be escaping with these underground gases. Well said. Well said. You're not going to hear that on the L.A. media. All right, Dana, go ahead. Step in here. (laughs) It's hard to, it's hard, you know, because I look at at the pollution, the way it comes across the ocean, and it gathers up around California, and California hangs on to it. So the gas that is coming out of there, a huge percentage of that is running down all those hills to the coastline. But it, You know, it may not be running to the coast. A lot of that stuff will flow in towards San Bernardino and Riverside, where the smog goes to retire. 
Right. Uh, that's what I'm saying. A lot of a lot of it because it's there's a lot of other stuff in there. Um, hydrogen sulfide, uh, benzene. There's all kinds of other. Oh, heavy, benzene. Heavy, oh, good. Right? All kinds yeah. of heavy stuff coming yeah. out of there, and that all hangs out low. You're right by saying what you say. To to me, you know, what are you supposed to do there? You got to get out of the way anyway. All the radiation from Japan already came through there. You got. 55,000, 55 gallon drums off the coastline all leaking. That's all raining all over that place all the time. And now you got this one. It's, huh. t- you know, it's a sign of times. It's time to get out of the Dodge. It's a beautiful place. I get that. It's unbelievable. It's a so buyer's market now in yeah. Porter Ranch. And so there, we just want, uh, you know, all these people that are vulnerable, anybody that's already sick or anybody that's trying to retire and enjoy and, you know, worked all their life and finally reach that plateau where they can retire and try to enjoy the life. That's not a spot to be and you gotta make a tough decision. Sometimes you gotta walk away from everything and liquidate it for nothing to get out of Dodge. But what's the sense of staying there if you can't enjoy your life a little bit later? It's gonna catch up to you. You can't avoid it. it. It's just this combination of what we really ultimately gotta start doing ourselves is when it becomes complete polluted like we know it's polluted i hear all these accidents at all these nuclear waste sites holding sites and people live in them communities and they have a fire in these places or a leach into the river or the ecosystem and they all say the same thing they want the government to step up and fix something they want the mm-hmm. government to give them money so they can leave or blah 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but every extra day you're there you are playing a deadly game particularly if if you treasure your health. Oh, and, and your children's health. You're going to liquidate your assets yeah. after anyway to try to, because it's yeah. just prohibitively expensive in America. You've got to be treated. In Canada, we have a health care system. <laughs> Taxpayers are picking it up, so everybody's sharing the pain. But you're not going to bankrupt every household each time you go to the doctor. Like America, you can get bankrupted with a broken arm if you've got minimum wage, for instance. So it's a very unbalanced, crazy system that shouldn't exist, and it's only because the war machine has sucked up everything. We can send in the military and deal with it. We really could. But uh, corporations, these corporations have no accountability. So nobody can go to jail. They have corporate They're personnel. above all laws and answerable to yeah. no one. Right, and that's just because of an, a legal amendment to the, the Constitution, American's Constitution, so the slavery law was switched to give corporations human rights and corporations and increments over decades all of a sudden had human rights and protections. Not all of them, but many of them. And so Gary Smith, of course, at Google can't get a criminal record. And that's why he keeps committing all of these crimes against people is because he never gets a criminal record for it. And then the media excuses them because the corporation... He doesn't get right. indicted. There are no grand juries right. Right. holding it's forth. It's only because Nothing. of corporate personhood. And yeah. SoCal California gas company is doing the same thing. Yeah. All the big polluters are doing that one trick against you. And they they put their money in offshore accounts on top of that so they don't pay state, federal, or local provincial taxes. Yeah. yeah. And so there's no accountability and the taxpayers have to pick up the slack. But the longer they wait, the bigger the, the amount is going to be. But they can't bring themselves to say California is polluted. And they couldn't do it after Fukushima, and they won't do it for anything else. Anything to do with a handful of corporations, they're not going to admit any liability. They're not even going to – they can't hold them accountable. It's impossible. Um, you, you can't uh, – OSHA, American Occupational Safe and Healthy, cannot surprise inspect a corporation like SoCal, California, these big corporations, or the big police departments, which are corporations. You can't surprise inspect them because they have human rights that are illegal. And so if people want some kind of future, some kind of justice, they have to work really hard and challenge that illegal amendment to mm-hmm. the slavery law, mm-hmm. which is corporate personhood. And that is the way forward. Unfor- unfortunately, if someone was to foil that tomorrow, all of these people haven't you take away uh, their security blanket, all of a sudden they can get a criminal record, they can get arrested. But that's what it was before. Before, there was all charters. For everybody else, it's still charters. It's only when you go on the stock exchange, really, that you become corporate personhood. And so, you know, uranium mines or these companies, energy companies, these are mostly shareholders, stockholders. That's the worst thing imaginable. 
It's the biggest betrayal imaginable. There's no checks and balances. Nobody can get a criminal record or let alone go to jail. And so how do you stop the criminal from repeating their crime? Normally you incarcerate them, you liquidate their assets to pay restitution, outstanding debts and everything else, and somebody else fills in that gap. But we don't see that happening because of this uh, thing called corporate personhood, which has now invaded the democratic countries and becomes a part of the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm saying is that you can attack them, but you have to attack them the only way that they're vulnerable, and that is to go after that illegal amendment to the Constitution that spilled over into democratic countries to get at these people. Correct. There really is no um, there, no accountability, and until then, nothing will happen. You know, name a politician that kept a promise, right? I can't huh. be done. So no. <laughs> it's the same thing with this corporate personhood. You can't hold them accountable. And why not? Well, because we don't. All you need is a lawyer and foil against the legal amendment. And that's all we need someone out there to step up and do that. Some organization. Some why, why, why isn't there one? What, uh, is the pressure there, there is, that that big? I mean, the, some lawyer who wanted to, let's say he was in it for ego, not money. He wanted right. to make a name yeah. for himself. He'd yeah. take this case pro bono in a second. He could win that. Oh, yeah. Piece of cake because it's an illegal amendment. It was done uh, dirty. I mean, Justice Hugo Black wrote an yeah. eloquent dissent in yeah. 1939 of how absurd it was that an amendment meant to free uh, black people from an oppressive government was being used to oppress the sovereign people. And that's what he meant by that was that the corporation took over and then it didn't pay. And now it has offshore accounts, so it don't pay taxes. So all the communities has to cannibalize the people in the communities because the big corporations won't pay their taxes. And so what else is a community local government supposed to do in order to survive and get perks and swimming pools and fast mm -hmm. cars and everything? Mm -hmm. Is they got to cannibalize the community. But if you look at the tax laws, that was the one thing they were trying to avoid happening that was the way of stopping big government was stopping the government from taxing everybody and growing because that was, uh, you know, because if I was collecting taxes from everybody in North America for just one day, <laughs> it's a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I know we digressed and went off in one sense, but that is the only way to hold them accountable. And so people really need to consider that, that ultimately somebody will do that. And that person will be a hero until the end of time, trust me. I but somebody think. needs to do it, right? Yeah. And yeah. do it soon, sooner than later. And start retroactively holding these people accountable at that stage. And create a whole industry of prosecuting these people for <laughs> their crimes. I don't care. But uh, once again, to the people in California, is your health more important or is your property and your assets? And from somebody that has lost... Uh, in life many times and then just started from scratch and rebuilt it all again and then had a fumble or a bad economy and lost it all again and what do you do? You get back up on your saddle and you go again and, and it never failed me. It always worked. It worked for everybody else that I know that done that and so if you're going to walk away from California's real estate that you've got, you think your life, you, your life is more important is all I'm saying and you can enjoy your life even, even though you got a good piece of property if you're sure. going to be ill. And you will be if you mm -hmm. stay in that environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the politicians are not going to tell you to get out of the way. Jeff told you. Yoshi told you. But no, you know, the, the, the governments are not going to tell you. If you're waiting for that to happen. Yeah, long wait. You, you can't got no one to blame on yourself after listening to this show. Uh, right, Yoshi, wouldn't you agree with that? Well, absolutely. You make an excellent point. You explain it very, very well about the lack of accountability of corporations, which makes it very difficult for individuals and even class action suits to go after them. Temporal case in point, international corporation is not considered a U.S. corporation, so therefore they can just pull up stakes any time. And the, the, the way they are able to give donations to politicians in the state of California, there's now apparently movements you know, there's a bill being, uh, or some sort of measure being drafted in the L.A. state legislature for uh, approval of a rate hike in Southern California, a natural gas rate hike, to pay all the costs of this disaster. Temple will make money from this thing. And so not only will it compensate, this is just like Fukushima, the Japanese government paying this multi-billion dollar Tokyo Electric Company, which has assets and uh, bank holdings all over the world as they manage to hide. Same thing with Semper, 
They don't have to keep their money in Los Angeles. They can hide it anywhere. And so basically, the cost of compensation will probably be by, uh, uh, paid for by anyone who uses gas for heating in L.A., uh, your industries. That oh, use all gas the rate payers. You bet. Sure. All yeah, of them. Yeah, for your, your gas. They're going to put the dump, the whole burden of this. And what's really going to be criminal, if indeed that gas at well 25, which is leaking, that's at 25, which is leaking, if indeed Semper wanted to dump that gas because it won't pay, uh, it's way above the minimum standard for a radon, they walk away laughing in the bank. They can sell that gas, they can, they can dump it in the air and get every penny back from uh, the cost plus more, okay, from uh, the residents of California. This is so unjust. It's so unjust. It's cruel. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it, it's unthinkable. But the state legislatures and certainly the federal government would be more than happy to settle things <laughs> that way. And, you know, attorneys mm -hmm. will just settle. You know, it's always a half measure, right? It's all as an out of court. You know, there's going to be an out of court settlement, which means the corporation, they still walk. You know, and so there is not a legal system here that what Dana pointed out, uh, you know, uh, incorporated entities can get away with murder and injury, no problem, and they can walk away laughing. Perfectly said. Uh, exactly uh, correct. Uh, to ask all of you again as we slide into the break here at the bottom of the hour, please do read the latest Fukushima and radiation updates at the top of the news section at rents.com for you. Just read the headlines, if nothing else. You'll understand. We've got Bob Nichols, your radiation this week, number 36, telling you what the radiation counts are and counts per minute around the country. And, oh, it's uh, number 38, not number 36, week number 38. Thank you, Bob, for that, as always. Uh, Fukushima radiation now mutating mammals in America. We talked about that last time. The door is still open. It's not going to close easily. This is something that is going to be picked up and watched more and more carefully by people who are not controlled and under the boot of the mainstream media and corporate America. So watch for more of that coming. It's, it's going to happen. All right. The West Coast animals along the West Coast are dying. There aren't many left. Uh, when the whales wash up starved to death, you begin to see the devastation of the lynx in the food chain. They're almost gone. It's, it's that crazy. Hold on a minute, and we'll come right back with Dana Dernford and Yochi Shimatsu as we continue on this Monday night. Stand by. With uh, Yoshi and Dana, I'm Jeff, and you folks, wherever you are around the world, welcome. Remember, any radioactivity that you uh, may be encountering could very well be coming from your nearby, well, nuclear power plant. NNPs are, uh, or NPPs are loaded with a daily discharge, so if you're Living within a 50-mile radius of any nuclear power plant, you are getting dosed. Uh, keep that in mind. Okay, now, the die-off of the North Pacific. Are we getting any idea, Yoshi, about the numbers remaining of fishes? We know 97% of the big fishes, most notably the tuna, are gone. Sardines, essentially gone. Anchovies, gone, herring, gone, whales dying. How many whales are left? Do we know? Do we have any idea? Nobody's going to tell us. I'll, I'll wager you anything that the government knows. The government knows what's going on. They're not going to tell us. How dead is the North Pacific now? This is a difficult question. What do you think? Your turn, Yoshi. Oh, we don't have him. All right, we'll get him back. Dana, you were going to be next. So uh, how dead is the North Pacific? We've done 260 days on the coastline uh, in the last 14 months, uh, 15,000 miles, 5,600 known residential species. Uh, we're down to less than 100 symmetrically throughout the coastline if you're lucky to find three or four in each spot. Wow. And wow. Uh, two million, four million other species didn't recede the coastline. So anybody's not familiar, that's as dead as it gets. And that everything that's dying after the mass die off birds and whales and everything else are extraordinary compared to any other year. And it's been accelerating for the last couple of years. 
Um, but the four million other species didn't receive the coastline, so that's game over. So they're for gone. Pacific. That's game. It is game it's over game for over. them. They're Birds done. are gone. They're gone. Yeah. Fifteen thousand miles, two hundred and sixty days. We left. Uh, no, we done everything I wanted to. Folks, anybody's not familiar, we, we went everywhere. It, you can't even imagine it. 260 days of hell uh, in our little rubber dinky. And we covered the whole coastline. We had another Zodiac to go ashore with. We went ashore in the islands all day, each day, at yeah, low tide in particular. But we were uh -huh. there 24 hours a day, and it's gone. This is unbelievable, unimaginable, inconceivable, and dead. Hollywood couldn't make this one up. This is the most terrifying thing imaginable, folks. And we got to raise awareness. Yeah. We got to start talking about it. It's the worst thing imaginable. It's accelerating now. And everything that died is starved to death. Everything that died is checked for lead and checked for toxins and checked for mercuries and checked for parasites and checked for diseases. And very rarely do we see that, but sometimes we do. But mostly uh, it's got to do with a lack of oxygen. And the, the basis of the food chain is completely missing. And like Jeff told you earlier, everything is missing. All the normal migratory animals and fish that are the most important ones, the, mm -hmm. the ones that for Those are mammals, the food fish. Yeah, they're links, yeah, the big links on the food converted chain. Converted all the smaller yeah. microscopic animals in the right. food, in the right. energy, are gone. That is inconceivable. And they have flopped. Uh, this is not this is not stopped, and it hasn't stopped coming out of Japan. It hasn't stopped coming out of all the other reactors. But a melted reactor, a comparison. Did we get Yoshi back? I don't know. I think so. You there, Yoshi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm back. My phone just went down. Okay. Uh, okay. Go yeah. back and ask Yoshi that question Where's again. Like, How dead is the Pacific Ocean, Yoshi? How many animals are left? What do you think the percentages are well, in rough yeah, numbers? We've heard the latest Latest kill off up al along the Alaska coast, north of where Dana normally patrols. Uh, you know, the, the thousands of murders and uh, those cute little puffins that kids love so much. About, you know, just untold numbers of them dead now lying along the shores. Terrible situation to see this, but obviously it's not starving to death. Yeah. They died of radiation. What's interesting is kill offs, how they die in groups. Yeah, you know, it's like they die all. It's like somebody throws a switch. Yeah, it's it's uh, it is bizarre. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, their life spans are sort of determined by DNA, and suddenly they just start falling within the space span of a week or two weeks. Now, what's interesting about Dana's voyages, uh, by chance or by whatever you call fortuitous, that's something we want to use that word uh, in such a grim situation, is that where he was patrolling is where the North Korean, I mean the North. The North Pacific Current uh, slams into the North American coast, and then it divides, you know, splitting off to the California Current moving south, and then northward, uh, uh, you know, around Alaska, the southern, you know, the shores of Alaska into the Bering Strait. What's interesting there is that the kill off that uh, Dana describes that many people, including anti-nuclear people, don't want to believe, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear this. You know, they're letting their subjective wishes get in the way the hard scientific reality Correct. is that, that the extent of that total kill off is now starting to expand. And we see now it's in the Alaskan coastal waters with the kill off of all the mm -hmm. birds there. The mm -hmm. sudden shutdown of their biological clocks. I think we're going to see much more of that also in the southern, in the California current. We've seen a lot of individuals take it. We've seen certain species take it, but we're talking about just a general extinction event of all life forms, or mostly the vast majority of life forms. What Dana has reported on is becoming a reality. It's moving out. It's moving, you know, north and south. And uh, I, yeah, I do have a word for so-called anti-nuclear, you know, activists who don't want to believe this stuff. Well, go out there yourself. Don't don't close your eyes and believe in wishful thinking. Dana's been out there. He reported all the data, all the photos. It's all there, you uh -huh. know, documented. Uh -huh. And the latest fell off at the last uh, really confirms in a big way thousands of birds of two different species at least well the more, the uh, you know just from the yeah the biologists that are watching this are using words like horrifying unprecedented they've never seen anything like mm -hmm. it these are these are our unqualified statements of shock they cannot believe what they're mm -hmm. seeing and when you say all the birds mm -hmm. tend to die en masse in a group it's as if they've been consuming these radioactive food sources 
little fishes and so forth, uh -huh. uh, as a species, and it builds up in them. And at about the same time, because of their daily intake, it, it, it pretty much equals each other. They try to eat about the same. That's what they do. And it gets to a point that the radiation in them bioaccumulates, and their systems begin to break down, and all of a sudden, they're gone. And, you know, the thing, Jeff, is that humans are not exempt. We're not some sort of special, you know, oh, no. Mammalian, no, no, no. you know, super species. No. That, you know, I've talked to a Japanese friend who was just back from Japan. He says, it's not reported in the press. No one, you know, no one's played by Oakley, but I've heard from many people who take the commute in Tokyo. The, the uh, frequency of people, just uh, commuters, just collapsing and dying on the, on the track. Just falling over, keeling over dead on, uh, on on the railroad platforms. He said, this is really astounding. It's never been, so very much like these birds, we may see mass kill off of humans also, starting in Japan, but then extending outward, going to North America. I agree. All right. Stand by. We have to take a little short break. We'll come right back and wrap things up for this Monday in just a couple minutes with Yoshi and Dana. You go to the beach this coming spring after the fifth year anniversary of the Fukushima Daiichi catastrophe, and you'll notice carcasses of sea lions, birds, fish, and so on littering the beaches for miles. Uh, you'll read the words complete reproductive failure, horrifying, horrid, mind boggling, and off the charts. This is uh, a, just an unprecedented tragedy, all brought on by nuclear power. Nuclear power and greed. We do not deserve to be the sentient caretakers of this planet. Somebody else has to step in here and do it. We don't have what it takes as a species. Yoshi, go ahead. Yeah, uh, this disaster is just so great. It's just staring us in the face. People are dying, too. Kids are coming down. With, We're not uh, talking about people yet. Just give it a couple more cancer. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote cancer in San Francisco area, Northern California. You know, cases are increasing. And, you know, I, I would like to see people who are connected with the nuclear industry, nuclear labs, uh, utility companies, and the public relations people who work for them and hire the various online trolls and people who send letters to the editor, <laughs> to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, editor, uh, to the editor's desk like the ones who uh, constantly attack, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Wilcox over in Japan. I'd like for them to do some soul searching now, you know, and people in the anti-nuclear movement who just do half punches and are just happy to remain just a half a crew. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. To start looking at themselves in the mirror and say, I am killing I, my science, my approval, my cooperation is killing my kids, yeah. it's killing my dog, it's killing my family, yeah. and it's killing me. I would like to see someone finally on year five say, I'm done cooperating, collaborating with this nuclear industry, and I'm going to speak out. I'm going to step forward and be a human being again, and I'm going to be out there defending all those sea mammals, all those you know, birds, yeah, and after any left. There, all the people out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's time for people year five. It's time you turn around. I'm just telling you, we're sick. We know, we know, you know, when these guys come up and poo poo everything and try to you know, discount what Dana's saying, attack him personally, we know they're paid to do it. It's time to just, you know, tell them to take that, uh, you know, take that money and shove it. You know, take that pay and shove it. Right. And quit being a slave of the nuclear industry and start being a human being again. And join us in this struggle against. The great extermination in our time. If you we don't, got, you're just going to go down with a landslide. That's it's uh, coming up on five years. Dana, is it pretty much following where you thought it would be right now? Thanks, Yoshi. Yes, Jeff. Thank you. Unfortunately, it is. And, my and where do we where do we go from here? Six. Where year six, year seven, year eight? It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad this year. I think there will be no whales left on the desert no. part of the Pacific Rim nations. None. All those beautiful gray whales gone. 
That'll, that'll, that, that'll wake people up, is what I'm saying, basically. Yeah, the whale watching will be out there watching nothing. Uh. Yeah, all the kelp along the coastline, all the underwater footage, it was all um, full of just incredible spots all year long. It was destroyed, and, and to the point where there was none left. Um, but the stuff that I did see on the underwater footage tells the whole story, where you had all these beaches made of shellfish, but there's no shellfish underwater. Along no the shells either. Yeah, no shells. They're all gone. So this is a station event. That's why we're not seeing a mass die off along Canada's coastline because it's already gone. Uh huh. Right? We proved that. And so yeah. that we won't see no mass die offs on this coastline. Can you we'll please uh, get me, so, uh, now that you've had time, a couple of your videos showing what you did and how you did it? I've got to, I've got to get this up there for you. I'll link right sorry, back to it. Just send oh, yeah. me the links. I'll, I'll I got, link I got right no to it. Excuses, man. Just All right. Burn. No, no, you're overloaded. I know yeah, it's not a problem, but I want to send you the That's links. I, I, I want our listeners, it. our viewers, to watch and see it. what you found in their with their own eyes. When I come back, I'll do a whole series on that. That's the plan. As I finish the documentary, I'm already into it. Good. And I have I have all the equipment, and so it's going to be stunning. It's going to like unfortunately, it'll be at least it'll be super good quality and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just shocking. How do you I don't know who's story? producing it, but you already have, as I said, probably 90% of the footage in the can. I, I mean, do, if you yeah. if you need yeah. or if you want a narrator, I'll narrate it for you. I mean, I whatever you want. You yeah, I'll be you. happy to help. Whatever I can yeah, do to help. So, put that in a conversation yeah. there. I didn't expect that one to show up. And that's the, uh, the whole point of this, I guess, in that is we got to tell a story, and it, it has to be told properly, of course, and we, we're we in that know. position where we could do that. We're the first, really, we're, we're in that crux of history where we could tell the story, like Yoshi was saying before. We're in that moment of history of, of where teeter-tottering people out there on a fence starting to realize yeah. nuclear is just unbelievable, and it got to go. There is no middle ground on it. It got to go if there's any hope for anything on this planet in the near future. Six, seven years from the accident, this is fifth coming up. Total yeah. devastation, unbelievable. And the system has got big cracks in it. And Yoshi's right by saying what he did, right. that there are people out there who want to come forward, and they got to do that because otherwise people are just not going to wake up in time. I don't know if there's anything we can do, but we got to try. That's all, I'm, all yeah. I can say, folks. we got to try. What, what else? Well, are we between to I mean, listen, between you and Yoshi, who, who else is there? <laughs> That's getting any traction or getting well, a voice. Well, but look, but they're, they're waking up at Porter Ranch. You know, well, I think they, they are. I mean, Yoshi, you, you, you and I have been doing they're this so for people that, yeah. five and years now. Took a long while, but people. People in San Diego, they're using the Board of Supervisors, started to wake up. It's a slow awakening, not fast enough, but the kill-off is so sad. We're getting hit from so many sides. The nuclear industry is in a state of collapse, and they're still trying to expand it. They're getting more and more reckless. People must stand up now and stop any further nuclear development and start shutting it down and put this waste away. We don't do this. It's really getting late, folks. We thought it was over by year three, Fukushima. And we were right in a certain sense. It was over for all those Pacific wildlife species. We're talking about humanity. It's going to be over, like, this next year if we don't start acting. People have got to do more. People have got to start doing more. You know, if they don't, it's over for you, your family, everything you love and believe in. Life as you knew it will be gone. And you will just be another casualty in the extension event, another body on the beach. Another body on the beach. How many do we have to see? Okay. You know, we don't get to see all of them that are out there because the media doesn't want to show it. They'll show it on the local mm -hmm. news, but you don't see it on the NBC, CBS, or ABC nightly news or CNN. You don't see much. It's just not talked about. That's how they handle these things. Uncomfortable situation. Truth comes home to roost. Could cost the U.S. government billions of dollars if people are uh, on their toes and, and file lawsuits, uh, and should. But I don't know, honestly, how much, how much more we can do than tell people the truth, which is what we're doing. There's nothing left out well, there. Nothing. Very little. 
Well, you know, Dana is a diver, but I think he's doing more to uphold the spirit of journalism, truth-telling, than any journalist right now. In North oh, America. yes, he is. I, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what journalism is about, is eyewitness, see this, be there, see the stuff, take your notes, try to figure out what's going on, look at the science, and then report it to the public. It's telling me, telling the truth of what's right. happening, right. what's gone wrong. And... Again, these corporate media people, it's time to dump the corporate media. And for people, that, the, the problem is the online press is being infected, too. It's been terribly infected. I, just, I was shocked, you know, because I get uh, academia and all these, you know, I do a lot of uh, research, re research papers on these research sites. Now there are academic papers defending remixology. That means, you know, the stuff you see on these bogus websites yeah, like Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. they pick up a scientific paper, they look at news from various newspapers, and they come up with a clever angle of plagiarism. They're just clever plagiarism. They're trying to defend that, you know. They're trying to defend that. I, and this is worse than the tabloid press, you know. You know, this is worse than the, the things like the Sun in England or the, you know, True. Weekly News of the World, all that. True. Okay. Now, that stuff was better journalism than the garbage we're seeing on the online press. We've got to make a U-turn, folks. We've got to get back to the truth. Uh, you know, the truth will set you free, and falsehood will put you on the beach. <laughs> it is going to be another body on mm -hmm. the beach, and I hate to put mm -hmm. it that way, but that's what's happening yeah. all over the world now with creation. Dana, thank you for being here. Uh, when you can get those videos down to me, I'll put them up uh, right at the top. Thank we you. want people to see your heroic work up there. And I don't—I oh, still don't know how you did it, but you did. I'm off to court tomorrow, so it'll be okay. when I get back, but I'll do it for sure. Right. I gotta, I'm packing tonight. Well, right? and... stay strong. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. You stay strong, and I want, and I want people out there you know, to listen to the show not to believe the garbage that spread, you know, to try to discredit Dana, you know, try to give Thank support you. his legal defense fund, send money to him. He needs it now more than ever, and your little oh, bit yeah. of help does matter. It does matter. I want everybody to just look through those lies. They're obvious lies from a bunch of deceivers paid by the nuclear industry, by the Crown Trust. That's a part of the Canadian government, British government. Sure they it is. money off the, uh, yeah. off the nuclear industry, nuclear money. They're all on the take. They are not there being crucified by these people. But we've got to stand with them now against this kangaroo court in Canada. Let me know tomorrow, Dana, how it goes if you get a chance to uh, okay. send me off an email. Good luck. Okay, hope to. Okay, good night. Yoshi, I... As we look back, uh, five years together just about doing this, uh, I think we can say, and I think most of our listeners would agree, and with their help, we have put up a hell of a fight and done the best we can against uh, really insurmountable odds. But we're not going to quit. We'll, we'll keep at it. But the damage has been catastrophic. It is exactly what you predicted it would be, and I said it would be, sadly. But uh, we have to fight. We have no choice. Yeah, our backs are against the wall. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. When it comes down, you fight. Yeah. We fight yeah. to the death. I mean, right. we're, you know, five years later, we may not be happier. We're wiser, and maybe we're a lot tougher now. You know? We're a lot, a lot tougher. I like to think so. You take care. I'll talk to you next week. All right. Okay, good night. All right, that's our Monday program. Wow, what an incredibly busy program. What an incredibly busy time it is. Uh, so many things going on. We will continue to do the best we can at Rents to keep you apprised of the situation in the world uh, with stories that we think are worth considering. We're not asking you to believe everything you read there, but consider it and let us know how you feel. All right, take care. Back tomorrow night.